Life is weird. It comes in stages that can be almost impossible to distinguish at times and then brutally obvious in others. This weekend, I watched the next chapter in my grandma's life basically bulldoze over her. She's 85 years old and is moving to an assisted living center this week. As we packed and sorted through a life's worth of belongings, I couldn't help but be a little sad. And yet, she seemed ready? I don't know, maybe even hopeful? <laughs> oh, is that what that is? Oh. After living the last 14 years without my papa and the last year of COVID quarantining, unable to see or touch anyone she loves, I realized how much isolation she's leaving behind. You know, With nothing in this house to comfort her but memories. This will be a new beginning, a new society of people for her to become a part of and not be alone. <laughs> While still getting to bring her history with her. You're good. You need iron, boy? Yeah, if you don't need one. What is it? It's Papa. Two Papa from Gosto. Oh. I don't know. Uh, is it open? No. It's a weary life. It is, she said. Doubly blank in a woman's lot. I wish, and I wish I were a man, or, better than any being, were not, were nothing at all in all the world, not a body and not a soul, not so much as a grain of dust or a drop of water from pole to pole. Still the world would wag on the same, still the seasons go and come, Blossoms bloom as in days of old, Cherries ripen and wild bees hum. None would miss me in all the world, How much less would care or weep. I should be nothing while all the rest Would wake and weary and fall asleep. Our society is constructed like a puzzle, and in those puzzles there are puzzle pieces, each unique and built in their own way. When they're put together they make a beautiful picture, but sometimes it may seem difficult to find and fit into an exact space in this puzzle. This is one of those pieces. My name is Antonio Almanza, I'm 20 years old. I go to UT Arlington and I'm currently studying mechanical engineering. There's been many moments I felt like it's been difficult to fit in. Being a, not being a citizen, I feel like I wasn't part of like that, like of a club. It was very difficult opening up to people about like the truth about me being undocumented because I feel like how would people re react to me saying that probably I feel like people were very uh, going to be judgmental I always thought I was a ghost in this country I felt I wasn't myself I felt I was ashamed of who I was so I feel like I didn't have an identity by not being able to express myself and saying hey I'm 
I'm undocumented to my friends, you know, because I feel like they're going to be very judgment judgmental about, oh, probably laugh like, oh, you're not going to be able to go to college. You're not going to be someone in life. You're going to just be, you know, stereotypical Mexican working in construction. So probably that's the identity I felt I was going to have. And when I was uh, trying to get a job, everybody, all my friends had a job already. And everybody was like, are you ever going to get a job? And I was like, oh, no, I'm just waiting on it because my mom's not gonna let me but reality i couldn't get a job because i had no social so it was very i felt like an outcast i wasn't able to fit in ever since i was a kid my mom would always enforce me hey try try your best at school because at the end it's going to be a, gr a good future for yourself and not for us like i was always had that mentality go to school and graduate and have a have a good paying job just just study um behave because uh you're not guaranteed here my safety wasn't guaranteed here because i was undocumented so if i would do like a crime i would get sent back or or you know deported but i really took that to uh to heart and started to uh live up to that expectation so i sometimes i felt like the type of expectation my parents had on me, it kind of affected me the way I would hang out with my friends. And my mom always told me to avoid attention because once you get, have attention, you're going to be spotted and might be sent back. So I would always try to avoid the attention. If I would come with a failing grade, she would probably be like, kind of disappointed in me. I've, I, I, under, I understand why they, they feel that type of way because, you know, they came from another country to come here to give me a better life and a better future for myself. Ever since freshman year, I had that mentality at first that is there really a point of going to college? Cause I have heard stories about many people dropping out because of um, being undocumented. So they dropped out of high school or just not, just going straight to construction, labor work after high school and I didn't, I didn't want to have that mentality. I wanted something better. I wanted to have like, I want to work, I wanted to work smarter. Having DACA is probably the closest thing of being able to fit into the puzzle because the whole puzzle is like the United States. Just that little piece is being able to look like it, but not able to fit in. It's just, you know, just a step. What does it mean to be DACA to me is is being able to work and just being able to go to school. Being part of this generation is very, uh, very difficult because you, you know, they can take it away. And one thing I really fear the most is that DACA being taken away. It's just, you just gotta, you know, always just keep moving forward and keep your head up. I didn't tell them. Drea. I know, I know. Just be patient with me, please. I just think it's better if I tell them in person. And they're coming down for my birthday. Give me some time to m mentally prepare. No. Is that okay? Please say something, please. What's there to say? Sounds like you've made up your mind. Monica, I could lose my whole family, my friends, everyone, if they found out. You remember how they reacted when Kayla came out, right? I'm going to sleep. Monica, don't be like that. I'd say you'd be embarrassed if everyone knew about us. Why would you go there?
Okay. What do you see when you look at me? Are you judging me based on what's on the outside? The color of my skin? Where I'm from? The clothes I wear? Or who I love? What do you see when you look at me? How about you stop judging me and join me? See my strength. See my passion. But most importantly, my heart. I enjoy my life. Beauty can be found everywhere. In my family. In my friends. In the music that touches my soul. I live my life high wine and I keep moving forward. Success. Because I am unapologetically.
When I went to film school, I learned the history of film. It isn't enough to tell us what a man did. The classic work of mostly are. white men. The people who taught me were not evil. They just passed on what they knew. I now realize that in making, teaching, and programming films, I have the responsibility of widening that lens of possibilities and encouraging true, authentic stories that encourages communities to go out and tell their own stories. As gatekeepers of cinema, we can unmask new storytellers and new stories, and in so doing, change how people can feel about each other, about themselves, and about the world. Since the beginning of the coronavirus outbreak, harassment and violence against Asian Americans has grown. The racist language former President Donald Trump used to describe the pandemic's origins in China didn't help. And now there appears to be a growing number of attacks against older Asian Americans. At least one person has died from their injuries. Bettina McElintal wrote about these events. Chapstick goes on, it's on. Get yours on at chapstick.com. Chork? Did I say it right? Yes. Okay, good. As we learn about the chork this morning. Can I help you find something? I'm looking for chapstick. Oh, well, we don't have chopsticks. Chapstick? Okay, you, you'll probably have to go to the Asian market. Okay, that, they'll have chopsticks there, okay? You, you, know, you know where the, the place is, the Asian market is at? I can tell you where that is. No, oh, some little Asian girl wanted uh, chopsticks, so I told her to go to the Asian market. Who? Be nice to the customers. Oh, do we have any chapsticks? Lip balm, my lips are dry, cracked, peeling. Hey! What? Ching Chong, go home. Oh, I am. I live like 10 minutes away from here. Have a good day. Sport's been really crazy, but other than that, I've been good. How about you? Mm -hmm. Same old. Did you hear about the elderly citizen got pushed in San Fran? I didn't, but I'm not surprised. Uh, 